This is Sheffield Live TV on a Thursday evening where we talk sport uh, and that could be uh, anything from rugby league to golf uh, to ice hockey to basketball or yeah. anything uh, or even more than yeah. that. Yeah, Driving, yeah. swimming, James Craig's your man. Yeah, he knows about not, not as much as that this week, but yeah, there is yeah, there is other things there's other than football. Yeah, of course. And two two ladies teams doing especially absolutely well. doing especially well, including Simon Moore. Of course, is still with us, the Sheffield United goalkeeper. Last but not least, yeah, uh, he doesn't play for the ladies. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, you know the the ladies team has only recently set up, uh, and Carla Ward, friend of this show, has yeah. been in a couple of times uh, joining us. Is coaching and managing and five successive yeah. victories I think at the do, moment. Do you have much to do with them? Do you see them knocking uh, out? Uh, do you know what? we don't to be honest? Uh, we was in on Sunday and I believe that was it, they played Spurs on Sunday. Yeah, yes. um, it was quite. No, they played Birmingham Sunday. Birmingham was yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Quite. Oh, it was and Sheffield. Sheffield yeah, FC ladies. ladies. Don't get mixed oh, up. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Sorry. We're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get all the that. details of that. But five successive victories, I believe. Yeah, that's fantastic. I yeah. say that uh, we we don't have an awful lot to do, but I've met. Um, Met the captain a couple of times at Rose, I think. Rosie, yeah. And um, yeah. no, it's, it's great. Obviously, it's it's, um, it's something that's becoming more and more popular um, as time goes on, and uh, that they're obviously doing really well. Yeah, yeah, gunning for the higher echelons, really, to get in the women's Super League, and there's a lot of attention on that now. And more and more professional clubs are forming women's teams, which is which which is really healthy. I just wonder if you saw some comments that I did this week. It was a national newspaper article with Mark Schwarzer, the former uh, Middlesbrough uh, goalkeeper, and he, and there's a lot of players, by the way, now that are you know worrying me to death because they're they're writing. You know, without these are not ghosts. He's good, Schwartz, sir. Yeah, he's a very intelligent guy. It must be something about goalkeepers, Simon. But yeah, a career usually for you. Really I, I think I'm just a nice guy. I wouldn't say intelligent guy, but maybe. <laughs> well, look, UX players are starting to write decent, half decent articles. Neil Collins, for instance, who you you won't have met probably, but was a Sheffield United yeah. defender. Yeah, well, it's a fantastic blog. Mm. Um, he's, he's over in America, America now, America. isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, this was a great piece from Mark Schwartz basically saying, and I thought what a good point it was, um, that goalkeepers are unfairly criticised by pundits on, say, for instance, live TV games. Uh, because almost invariably the pundit is an outfit or former outfield player who has no experience of being between the sticks. Is that anything that struck you uh, or th you thought about? Yeah, um, very much so. And I think... Um so my brother actually sent me the article during the week. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and uh, he sent it over to me and said, check this out, have a read of this and, and see what you think. I think it's really good because obviously we both sort of chewed a fat about goalkeeping and uh, I thought it was an excellent article, really. And it's very, very rare that you actually see goalkeepers on the sort of panel and, and giving their opinion. And it's such a, it's such a specialised position. Do you ever, uh, you know, do you ever feel a bit peaked? Uh, you, you've heard a comment, um, and you think, what are they talking about? That, that they're completely wrong with that, and they've pinned you for a mistake that, or something you feel you, you you've not yeah, done. Yeah, it's fru uh, it is frustrating when you hear commentators sort of generically say, oh, just the goalkeeper should have done better with that, or mm. he's been beating his near post, or it's such it is such a specialised position that unless you've actually played in goal, it's very difficult to to understand it and obviously you've got the goalkeepers union and it's quite funny really you get all the sort of outfield lads give you a bit of stick and and again like commentators are just we'll, we'll just sort of say it because it's something to say they don't really understand and it is it is frustrating to be the honest. near post beating at the near post yeah. that's one of the biggest football cliches going isn't it yeah in terms of you see some some shots go to the near post we think actually that was a blooming good shot there's yeah. nothing the keeper could have done there yeah yeah it's, it's, it's football though, it's football, it's why everyone yeah. loves it, it's like everyone has an opinion, one person will think, that's an unbelievable strike, no yeah. chance, the other person will say, what's the, what's the keeper doing there, he should yeah. have saved it, and, and that's why people love the game, but I think um, it was really interesting when Peter Schmeichel went on Monday Night Football and, and gave his opinion on goalkeeping, uh, and I'd like to see, to see more goalkeepers sort of get involved in the media that's, and be yeah. able to actually... Yeah. Be able but to give their opinion. Will outfield players then say, "Well, what do they know about being playing as a striker or a midfield player?" You yeah, know? No, that's true. Yeah, I'd probably get a bit of stick if I started trying to tell yeah. a striker what to do yeah. or saying, oh, "I thought the defender or midfielder should have done this," because they'll say, "Well, you playing goal? What do you know?" So, 
that's how it feels as a goalkeeper. You know, I always think we're, is, yeah. we're, we're seeking perfection with goalkeepers because unless you're beaten by the sort of goal that you were beaten by, I'm sorry to raise it again on Tuesday night. <laughs> no. well, people, <laughs> if you're very close to something, or sometimes you can almost be penalised for having got something on it, and then before it goes in, and then people will say, well, look, he, he got a hand to it, he should have stopped it. Yeah, it, and, that, and that, again, that's a very sort of generic thing. If, if a goalkeeper gets anything on the ball, he's expected to save it. And I think now, especially, the, the balls are hit with such a sort of velocity and movement that you could be going one way, the ball could then go the other, and sort of it makes the goalkeepers look stupid, really. Mm. And But, yeah, say commentators... Uh, pundits, everyone, everyone's got their own opinion. So if you don't get anything on it, people say, "Oh, nobody would have, nobody would have stopped that. Would have beaten any goalkeeper in the world." You get something on it, and then it's a different story. Yeah, I think it's very similar to the batsman who gets an edge at cricket. Of course, it is. There yeah. are many batsmen who aren't good enough to get an edge. No, correct, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it similar? Some bowling is too good for that, but yeah, that's yeah. the difference. Well, we were talking Simon Tracy last week about this, and yeah. I was saying, you know, in his era, he sort of had to transcend that kind of fitness era. Whereas before, as a goalkeeper, could probably get away with not doing as much. You guys, you know, see how hard you work and George Long has worked as well at the Blades, putting in hours and hours a day in top physical condition, don't really drink as much. So you are doing everything you can, aren't you? You know, the he's standard smiling. hopefully is improving. <laughs> he's 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 smiling. Smiling. Why, why is he drinking? Why is he drinking? Do you see that? No, I, I, I agree. I think, <laughs> I think, to be honest though, um, Goalkeeper is a mentality. I yeah. think you could do all the hours of the day in the gym. You can stay out on the training pitch from dusk till dawn. If you're not mentally switched on, then yeah. you're never going to have a chance of, of playing at the highest level. And, and that's the difference between the good and, and the greats, I think. Who yeah. are the goalkeepers that you particularly admire or aspire to currently, for instance? Currently, at the moment, so. um, I, I, really, I really like um, Edison at Manchester City. I think he's come in and, and been fantastic. Um, Especially coming in for such a big price tag, uh, and to obviously come in to, to such a big club as City, I think he's come in and he's almost sort of seamlessly fitted in. Um, it's difficult, really. Um, you you look at it, and I think obviously we talked about Peter Michael earlier. He was sort of one of my idols growing up. He was very sort of very aggressive in his style of goalkeeping, and. Uh, he was someone that I looked up to. Uh, but then you had on the other sort of side of the spectrum, David Seaman, who was sort of very calm, very composed about his job. So everyone says, like, goalkeepers are crazy. And goalkeepers <laughs> well, they are. are yeah, everyone, <laughs> that's mate. what everyone thinks. Everyone thinks goalkeepers are crazy and loopy. And uh, I've come across quite a few crazy and loopy ones. Have you? But, Tell me about a few. Uh, <laughs> come on. He was crazy. Um, I was, when I was at Brentford as a young lad, uh, Wojciech Chesney was there right. on loan from Arsenal. And uh, he was quite a sort of strange character, very, very confident in himself, but a very good goalkeeper. And his mentality w was excellent. Yeah. And, and that's why I think he's, he's playing where he is today. He's yeah. at Juventus now and he's, he's on absolute fire And because he had that sort of belief in his, his ability. Uh, other crazy guys. Um, I'm trying to think of which other ones. Eccentric is the word, isn't Eccentric, it? Eccentric, yeah, that's probably yeah. the best way of putting yeah. it. I, I've been I quite lucky. I've been really lucky with sort of the lads that I've worked with over the years. Um, I've worked with some excellent goalkeepers, like when I was at Cardiff, David Marshall. Yeah. He's probably probably the best goalkeeper that I have actually worked with, to and be honest. Captain, and that says a lot. He's captain as well at Hull. Yeah. Hull City, yeah. goalkeeper yeah, captain. Yeah, captain, and he was captain well, when, at Cardiff yeah. as well. Um, he was it, when I saw him in the FA Cup anyway last week. Yeah, so. he's, yeah. he's an exceptional goalkeeper and, and very experienced. And he's someone who sort of I looked up to when I was at Cardiff. He was very sort of very level headed, mm -hmm. very composed. And I sort of I saw that and think you need to be like that as a goalkeeper mm -hmm. because you get so many highs and lows that you need to try and keep yourself sort of on an even keel if you want to be successful. OK, we'll talk about one of your highs. Uh, we've, 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 done, we've done with Tuesday being one, one of the lows. We'll oh, took, up, took up the whole first half. <laughs> <time. laughs> uh, we'll talk about one of, the, one of the highs of your career uh, after we've heard from, from James. Hopefully the high nice for nice Simon and the Blades on, well, come on Saturday. Doing yeah. the double over Walls would be brilliant, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Particularly yeah. what a lead they've got at the top of the championship at the moment. <laughs> Robert Stodgrass, though, playing for Wolves on Saturday. All long-range efforts, hopefully, fingers crossed. 5.30pm. Stop PM. mentioning Yeah, that. I know. Well, we keep we keep. It up, don't we? You can't tell me not to bring it up. Um, <laughs> televised game, 5.30pm Saturday it is, and Wednesday they take on Birmingham at Hillsborough. 
They actually had a dry January Hill, um, at Hillsborough, didn't they? Uh, because they only scored <laughs> goals in the <laughs> FA Cup. In I the see where league. you're coming from, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully you can score some goals when they play against Birmingham. First three league games, Joss Lahukai. Yeah. Nil nil. All nil, three. Nil. And you know, it could be a fourth on Saturday or I'm doing that game. But so in a way, you know, in a way it's easy to take the Mickey a little bit to, in, no, you know, red and white you know, colour centre celebrating another one. No, yeah, well, I'm not <laughs> celebrating another nil nil, yeah. but they're not, are they really? Because that's actually setting the foundations, isn't it? So, without a doubt, great, great point at Middlesbrough. I thought, absolutely. Point. So, they play Birmingham at Hillsborough on Saturday, three o'clock kickoff. Sheffield FC, they play, uh, they lost at Newcastle um, away um, at Old Church this weekend. And great win for the ladies, though. Simon mentioned it earlier that um, the Sheffield FC ladies played against Tottenham Hotspur on Sunday. Al and I were kicking ourselves, <laughs> we didn't get there. Absolutely. They won 4 3. Yeah. There was three red cards, apparently it was an absolute belter of a game. So, um, yeah, so gutted we didn't go to that one. But Sheffield United ladies as well, the division below in the uh, Women's Premier League, they won 5-0 against um, Birmingham City at Shirecliffe. Carla Ward, she still wants more, though. She wasn't happy. No, I read those quotes. Yeah, yeah. those quotes yeah. after the game, brilliant. So they're playing against Rotherham again at Shirecliffe at home on Sunday. So I think I might be making a trip up to watch that one. Can't miss the ladies' game. Talk, especially. Tell us about it next week. Yeah. Absolutely. When there's yeah. all those goals going yeah. in, can't... Um, can't not keep go. missing them, can we? Be rude um, to not go. Absolutely. A massive win for the Sheffield Steelers as well. Last night, played against the Cardiff Devils in the Challenge Cup semi-final. They won 6-2 got one up over him because the Cardiff Devils definitely had the better of Sheffield Steelers um, last season into the Challenge Cup final for the fourth season in a row going for the third win in that competition good luck to them uh, when that one comes around double header for them as well at home this weekend Panthers on Saturday and Manchester on Sunday loads of tickets left so do get them if you fancy seeing some ice hockey uh, Sheffield Sharks they won the Roses clash versus Manchester last week last Friday at the EIS um, and they're actually playing against the Cheshire Phoenix who won the BBL Cup final um, on Sunday, did you see that Mike Tuck, who I believe is coming in here, is it next week? He's next week, in, well, he was actually on the punditry for that. He was on the was tele, fl flicked on the red button. There he was, Mike. Yeah, doing Crikey. his punditry, offering his insight. He'd have been paid for that as well. Of course, he will have. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if he'll still come in next week. Oh, I hope so. He's booked. Anyway. Well, we're struggling, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they play Plymouth um, away this weekend. Do the Sharks, but tomorrow they actually um, play against. Uh, yeah, sorry, they play against Plymouth tomorrow um, at the English Institute of Sports. Um, Sheffield Tigers looking to run their uh, sort of terrible run mm. of defeats. Nine defeats in a row. They're still ten so well. I yeah. know, they were flying at the start yeah. of the league, but I think luckily that, that sort of run that they had before Christmas has kept them up there in tenth in National 2 North. Sheffield Rugby Club as well, they're off the bottom of the table after beating Leicester last weekend. They play Chester away from home this weekend. And finally, Sheffield Eagles, start of the Super League season, Rugby League, but of course also the Championship season starts this Friday. They're away at Dewsbury and a bit of a boost as well because Corey Eston and Gary Lowe are both back for the Eagles in that one. So Rugby League starts again. Hopefully get Mark Aston or something in as well. Yes, it would be great, be great to, to hear Mark from Aston them. Mark or Keith Senior about Yeah, because it looked like they were going to fold, didn't it, at one stage sort of yes. last season and they're sort of always there at the start of the season. So when we know where they're going to be playing their home matches, I'll I keep you updated on this programme. It's fairly certain but they're going to the Olympic Legacy yeah, Park. I hopefully think it's so. pretty close to sort of announcing yeah. or agreeing that. So yeah. we look forward to that. Thanks, James. No worries at um, all. Yeah, FA Cup. Uh, you know, you've had some success in it uh, previously. Uh, Brentford, um, John Terry, I, you know, I thought how well he played. I don't know in goal whether you clock other players closely or whether you're too preoccupied with what you're doing to notice players. But I, he just played so well. Yeah, no, a few of the lads did actually say today, we were speaking about the game and, and they said how, how well he played. And I mean, he's, he's an England international. Uh, he's, he's captain to England and he's played for Chelsea for many years. He's obviously a, a very experienced footballer. And uh, again, I think, like I say, he showed the other night his experience. And um, he's, um, nah, he's, he's just he's someone that obviously I say I've come up against. Uh, which yeah, some years ago uh, with uh, Brentford, uh, a two two uh, twenty thirteen, so four years ago, or five years ago, a a two two draw with uh, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah that was uh, it was it was brilliant. It was a typical sort of FA Cup tie. Like it was at Griffin Park. The pitch, I think, the game was nearly cancelled because the pitch was like a, a ploughed field and. Just Chelsea, just, just yeah, you. perfect for us. Yeah. And Chelsea, I think, were European Cup winners at the time, and. Uh, 
no, it, it was a great experience to play against them and, and to get a draw and to go back to Stamford Bridge was, was something that will obviously live long in the memory for me. Does it sort of make you a bit, not, not scared, but a little bit thinking, oh my word, when you're seeing Drogba or someone like that stood there in the box at a corner and you're sort of looking at him and you're thinking, oh my word, is that a bit weird? Uh, do you know what? It's funny because I think when you're playing, when you're out on the pitch, if, especially for me as a goalkeeper, yeah. it's like the job's the same every time. You're there to keep the ball out of the back of the net, whether you're playing against Drogba or whether you're playing against a championship player, a League One player, a League Two. You kick it, you come for crosses, you make saves. The job, the job doesn't change. Maybe sort of before in the build-up, you might think, Christ, like coming up against him today, <laughs> yeah, or yeah. afterwards you look back and reflect and think. Yeah, that was a good experience, yeah. but during that moment, you're so sort of focused and in, in, in the zone that it doesn't doesn't sort of matter who you're playing. Yeah. Wolves, have, Wolves have got some fair attacking talent that will be ranged mm -hmm. against you, Bonatini and others on uh, on Saturday. I don't know how much preparation a goalkeeper makes in terms of studying those strikers. And yeah, you? yeah, we do, we do a lot, and I say that's that's a lot of credit to our goalkeeper coach Darren, Darren Ward, Darren like Ward, the yeah. sort of sessions that we do are very much based on on the opposition and, and who we're playing uh, on a Saturday and uh, that's something that he's really good at, the attention to detail going into it gives you every chance of, uh, of, of having a good performance and getting a result with that preparation that you do during the week. So he's terrorised you with videos of uh, Wolves? <laughs> I, this yeah. I wouldn't say, say terrorised, <laughs> no, we've, done, we've done, done a lot of work and uh, yeah. I say that's, that's all you can do if you prepare if you prepare right then you give yourself yeah. the best chance. You've always started games positively but you're at the other end of the, the field. Um, even in away games, and I've not seen many of them, I've seen a lot of games at home, it strikes me that you're, you're kind of almost playing like the home team. Yeah. Uh, and I can't see this one being any different in the way that you set about it. Is that strange for you as a goalkeeper? Uh, I think, I mean, you, you look at it, we've obviously got a certain style uh, yeah. of the way we play uh, and we've been very successful with that uh, and I think it's, it's when things aren't going well that, that you maybe need to look at that but things have been going well, yeah we've had a, a few bumps along the way but I don't think it's sort of any any drastic changes that, yeah. that are needed because say we've been doing well, uh, there are principles, that's the way we play and, and it's been successful so far so um, there's, there's sort of no reason to, to be changing things no, really. The first half the other night you did, needed a pair of binoculars really to yeah. keep an eye on the guy. You're <laughs> yeah. nowhere near you. And the thing is it, it, it's difficult obviously, um, I say for myself I think concentration levels have to be, have to be massive and especially in, in, in our team at the moment I don't, I don't get an awful lot to do uh, and frustratingly sort of goals have gone in when I haven't had a lot to do. Uh, and like I said to you, I'm, I'm the harshest critic and I've looked at every goal conceded and probably um, there's only one that, that I'm really disappointed with. But um, there's others that I say I look at and think, well, maybe I could have done this or I look at that. But genuinely, I've, I've not really had a lot of chance. There have been some bounces. You know, yeah. you've, you've been hit by some sp spectacular goals without yeah. making an excuse of it for anybody. Yeah. It's a fact. You, you have, haven't you? Very much so. And right. it's, it's, I say, it's frustrating because, um, but on the other hand, we're not getting peppered week in, week out. And I think it shows how strong we are sort of as a defensive unit. And uh, you, you'd be worried if you were getting sort of peppered week in, week out and goals were flying in left, right and centre. So. Do, do, do you, though, secretly hope for that early involvement? Um, I think as a young lad, as a young lad, yeah, yeah they'd always, you'd always get someone to say, oh, it's nice to get a good feel of the ball, yeah. or nice to have an early touch, but as you become more experienced, you sort of take it as it comes, really. You might not have anything to do for, for 10 minutes, and then you'll have a goal kick or a cross, or you might have to make an important save, and I think it's important, especially when you don't get things to do, that you don't, as a goalkeeper, go chasing the game, because that's when you sort of start, start running into trouble with, if there's a ball that you shouldn't have come for, but you, you, yeah. you've not been concentrating or you haven't had much to do and you feel like you have to get involved, that's when decisions sort of start to go away, really. So you just need to, you just need to sort of let, let it come to you uh, and when you're called upon, make sure that you, you make the right decision and that's sort of what separates the, the sort of average goalkeepers to, to the best goalkeepers, really. You're kind of acting from cold in more ways than one because we've had some absolutely freezing weather lately and some freezing nights. What is that? How do you keep warm? Just tell us what that is like for a goalkeeper, because I'm, 
you know, we're all muffled up in the press box and all the and yeah, all yeah, stuff, we're yeah. Layered, layered up. So the, you know, we almost forget about it after a while. You uh, just tell us. I mean, it's okay if you're running around as an outfield player. What's that yeah. like? Uh, do you know what? It, it's weird because all I wear is like just a vest underneath my goalkeeping top. Yeah. And like you say, it's probably like one, two degrees, but. Or less. It's been less. Maybe even less, yeah. yeah. But f for me, I think you get such a sort of adrenaline rush and you're so involved and you're so ingrained in the game. You don't even think, yeah. you, you can't think about it. You just don't for some reason. I, it's funny, I did think about that thinking. Why don't I get cold during the game? <laughs> yeah. like, I should be freezing, but you don't because you're so focused and you're so you concentrate so hard. You, you can't even you don't even think about it. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh well, it's, it's it always amazed me. I, I always thought keepers did get cold, Must whether be they're admitted or not. Yeah. But you know, I suppose it's the difference between playing on a parks pitch. You know, with two men and a dog and a freezing wind coming across. The ball's going to be clumped in the front of thirty thousand. Yeah. <laughs> you know. 30,000 hot breaths on, on your back and yeah. uh, a TV audience. Does the TV audience Im come into your mind at all when, you, when, you, when you're playing? Again, probably probably maybe when I was younger, um, you, you'd think about it on TV mm. and you'd tell your friends or you'd tell your family and you'd be like, oh, I'm playing on TV and you'd get yeah. excited. But I think as, as you get older and you become more experienced and you sort of, you, you, you're always being watched. You, you're on the Football League show, yeah. you're... You're being watched by 30,000 fans each week, and whether Sky cameras are there or not, it's it's, it's a game of football, yeah, and it's yeah. something that you, as you get older, you just sort of learn to deal with, really. But you like, get those highlights, you know, on on Channel Five. Say say you've won three nil. Yeah. Never see you. <laughs> no, you never yeah. see me. Yeah. And usually you play no part in it whatsoever. I'm, really, I'm usually really happy when they don't see me because it means I kept a clean sheet. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the less sort of, the more under the radar I go, the better, really. But yeah. I think that's another thing as well. You, with goalkeeping, when when goalkeepers aren't really talked about, you know yeah. that probably they're doing quite a good job because yeah. they sort of just go about their business and and go under the radar, um, and they're just sort of they obviously do it well and. It's when you are being talked about, and it's like sort of Joe Hart over the last couple of years has, mm. has been taking yeah. a hell of a lot of stick. Un, unfair criticism, I think. He's to be made a, with he's, he has made mistakes, hasn't he? Let's be fair about yeah. it. A few mistakes. Well, everybody makes mistakes. They're but probably again, high he's profile. For West, he's playing for West Ham with a leaky at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, 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 he has made it. mistakes, and I think because he's the England goalkeeper, they get highlighted even more. and. I think it's easy to forget what he's actually done in the game. Though he's won the Premier League sort of three or four times. He's been goalkeeper of the year in the Premier League. He's yeah. played against Barcelona and kept them yeah. out of bay. Like he, he's a fantastic goalkeeper, but because of the profile that he's got, yeah. any yeah. anything gets magnified. Well, he copes with it. He's a big character, isn't he? Yeah, isn't yeah. And you have to be. I say, if you want to be successful, when you you want to get to the levels that that he's got to, you have to have a thick skin and. You have to be able to deal with criticism, mm. and it's like the media nowadays as well, with like Instagram, Twitter, yeah. all the internet. It's there. You, you, You're opening you yourself up, aren't you? You are. Yeah. A goal goes in. You, it have. could be easily found on Twitter. You write your name in, and I had a message tonight saying, "Tell you to get on Twitter from on Twitter." Did you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was on, on Twitter. I was on Twitter before uh, yeah. uh, a while ago, but. <laughs> I, 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 well, yeah. What I, drove you off? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I, we've got I, 20 seconds left. Yeah. 20 seconds left. <laughs> no, I just um, you open yourself up for trouble, really, especially yes. as, a, as a goalkeeper. I'm very wise. I'm very sort of laid back. There are strikers that are on Twitter. They're entertaining. Yeah, they're entertaining yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Few, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know, one, I know yeah. one. Yeah. Simon, thanks so much indeed. It's been Cheers, absolutely pal. brilliant. Thanks, Thank you very mate. much Cheers. indeed, James. Pleasure. Thank you for watching. Repeat at 11. It's on my YouTube channel this evening. See you next week. Bye bye.